The following is a paid commercial announcement. The view of the following program does not necessarily reflect those of the staff, management, or sponsors of News Radio 1180 WHAM. Now on 50,000 Watt News Radio 1180 WHAM, this is Ask the Experts. Grab a line now at 222 1180. Star 1180, a free call for Verizon Wireless subscribers, or the One Communications line at 1-800-295-1180. Now live from the WHAM studios in downtown Rochester, it's Ask the Experts. Good evening and welcome to Ask the Experts, Simply Green Radio, brought to you by Simply Green Energy and Mr. Ruder Plumbing. Brendan O'Riordan in studio with you on this Sunday evening, hoping you are enjoying your Sunday. Uh, hopefully many of you maybe had a chance to come downtown to downtown Rochester yesterday for the uh, annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. I know I was there. It was a lot of fun. Good to see some uh, some good folks and uh, had a lot of fun with that. But I uh, want to welcome into the studio Maurice Aubrey, Mo, uh, the project manager at Simply Green Energy. I uh, want to welcome in Pete Marisi, True Story Pete, project manager for renewable energy for Mr. Ruder Plumbing. He runs the water conservation in, the, in its green division. And also Brenna Hartman of Fixie Chick and founder of HealthyHomesOfRochester.com. So welcome all three of you again. Good evening. Yes. Thanks so much, Brendan. Good evening, Brandon. And, uh, well, hey, let's start things off. I know we're going to have a guest here in studio um, in, the, in our next segment, Mike Parks, director of uh, renewable energy at, at, uh, at VP Supply Company. Um, Mo, like I always, I always like to start off the show, um, Simply Green Energy. Tell, tell folks what, you know, what types of products you offer. What is Simply Green Energy? Uh, great, great, great questions, uh, Brandon. Again, you know, just reiterating uh, Simply Green Energy, or my Simply uh, – yeah, Simply Green Energy. <laughs> a little tongue tied tonight. Um, it's a company where basically, if you want to be uh, off, you know, uh, net net uh, zero energy uh, concept, uh, heating and cooling your house with the earth, and uh, being able to, um, you know, uh, uh, take the energy from the uh, sun or wind uh, for your electric needs, and uh, you know, that's the whole idea is basically. Um, your home creating as much energy as it basically uh, uses. All right. So net zero is the is the goal. And now a uh, little housekeeping here. Either I'll let either one of all three of you answer this question. I think Brenna, maybe you might answer it. But uh, mysimplygreenenergy.com, dot com. There are new facets to this website, are there not? Well, there most certainly are. Uh, not only do we have a page explaining the geothermal process to uh, folks that would like to visit mysimplygreenenergy.com, we also have a page on solar, which we're going to be talking about today on Simply Green Radio. But on our homepage, you can actually click on Listen to Simply Green Radio now, and you can hear all of our past shows each week. They'll be uploaded to the website, and uh, it's a YouTube video channel. Along with that, Pete, and thank you very much, Pete, because it's a great place to go. Thanks. He actually has a favorites tab on there as well. If you click on the favorites tab, you can link up to a lot of the websites we might direct you to during the show for tax incentives and uh, you know other types of things that we talk about that aren't on our website that can be helpful to the listener. It's a good place to do to do research. It's a good place to do the research. And as I mentioned uh, in last week's show, um, I'll tell you, I listen to them, and and I'm learning myself, and and I'm sitting here, <laughs> okay, and I'm looking at you right in the eye, and there's so many facts and that are coming across the airwaves that it's hard to capture them mentally, and you know, there's so many definitions and so many acronyms in this industry, like none I've ever experienced, that it just makes it, uh, you know, it slows down the learning curve a little bit, so you can learn at your own pace, as well as look at our favorites tabs, which explains in depth other people that are doing this sort of thing, and it and it helps you understand it better. Mm -hmm. I should mention, too, that on mysimplygreenenergy.com is a contact us page, so you can get a hold of us right, th right there if you have any questions about anything we cover on the radio show, or if you're just um, interested in inquiring about geothermal energy, solar energy, or wind power, um, we'll be happy to answer your questions right from the website. And because now... Uh, <coughs> Uh, you and I are the younger generation here in studio tonight. Uh, no offense, for guys. Yeah. But, uh, you notice what they're paying for. Fan, sure, sure. For fans Very on uh, shorty. <laughs> for, for fans on Facebook, I think they can friend Simply Green Radio because I have done that myself. Yeah, we have a little Facebook page going on over there, and not another place that you can uh, post a comment or request uh, a topic you'd like to hear us cover on Simply Green Radio. 
All right, and uh, 222-1180, if you want to join in on the conversation, again, that number 222-1180 uh, in studio tonight with Maurice Aubrey, Pete Maurice, and also Brenna Hartman, and we will be joining, uh, Mike Parks will be joining us, the Director of Renewable Energy at VP Supply Company. And in that regard, actually, well, before we before we get to that, uh, Brenna, I think you wanted to mention something about uh, Fix a Leak Week. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Brendan, right. did you know that uh, this week in March is National Fix a Leak Week? I did not know that. Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> and since we're sponsored by Mr. Reuter Plumbing, I thought it was apropos to talk about it. All right. um, one of the interesting facts that you might uh, find helpful is that the average home can waste 11,000 gallons of water per year, which is enough to fill a swimming pool. Wow. That's a lot of water. Yeah. And, and those, you, those drips sure add up, don't they? They do. And finding and fixing your leaks can save at least 10% on your utilities, as well as, of course, saving our precious resource. We talk about water. And I had some tips today on conducting a DIY water-saving audit for those do-it-yourselfers out there. And, of course, if you're not a do-it-yourselfer, you can always give Pete or Mo a call over at Mr. Reuter Plumbing, mm-hmm. and they can help you out. But right. uh, one of the first steps to finding out if your home has a leak at all is to uh, take Take a water meter reading uh, when you're not using your water. So if everybody's going to be leaving the home for a couple hours, take the water meter reading. When you return about two hours later or so, you're going to take a second reading. If the number's changed, you can be pretty sure you have a leak somewhere in your home. So that's just one easy way initially just to to test to see if you are wasting water. Um, The second one is, and uh, Pete and I had this conversation. This is what we talk about down in the lobby, toilets. Um, (laughs) It's toilet uh, talk, you know, (laughs) girl talk. The (laughs) toilets are, uh, (laughs) I know, what is wrong with Uh, me? Am I the only woman that can sit with a bunch of guys and talk about toilets? Okay, yeah. Keep it clean, (laughs) right? (laughs) Keep it clean, yeah. Uh, But anyway, Pete, you mentioned that that's what, the biggest water waster in the home? When a toilet doesn't work properly, um, uh, it is one of the largest water wasters imaginable. Mm-hmm. See, uh, I would have thought it would have been my teenager showering, but I'll go well, with the toilet. That's a close that's, second. Well, she's using the water for a purpose. We're talking about, you know, a, a silent water waster. And one of the telltale signs of a toilet not working properly are, is a toilet that seems to flush itself in the middle of the night. All of a sudden you hear water running. And that's mm-hmm. a toilet that's not working properly. Mm-hmm. And, and the water is escaping the toilet it actually flushes itself, and now it's re- it's on a refill mode, and that's what you're hearing. And that's for no reason. And, and that's for no reason, and it's intermittent, mm-hmm. and uh, you can almost set your watch to it. It and happens. It's not with the a, with little a... gremlins at night that do no, it. No, it's not the <laughs> no, little gremlins at no, night. No, definitely not. Oh, well, Pete, you know, while you're mentioning that, we should really uh, tell the you know the do yourselfers, um, you know, another little uh, trick is to drop a couple of uh, drops of. Uh, food coloring in the tank of the bowl right. and then uh you know in the morning when you get up take a look and see if that uh the dye has gotten into the bowl mm-hmm. and then you'll know that your tank or your flapper mm-hmm. is right, sealing let, let, properly so you know i don't want the tank is the part that you lean up against with your back that's right. the tank mm-hmm. the bowl is the part that's on the bottom that you sit on right the water fills into the tank the part against the wall and it should hold in there until you're ready to use it when you have what's called a water transfer problem, when the water escapes from that tank to the bowl, that's actually flushing. Okay, so you put the dye in the part that you're leaning up against, against the wall. And if you see the water in the bowl begin to change color, that means that you don't have a good seal. Okay, and the water is escaping right. the system. And if I right. can comment on that. Mo, no offense, but I don't think you clean your sure. toilet, so I would not recommend leaving the food coloring in there overnight. Fifteen minutes is good, and then fifteen minutes give it a good, good couple flushes. Yeah, so if it you see it in fifteen minutes, you definitely have a serious problem with your flush valve. <laughs> I so just don't that, want to be scrubbing it. And you know, I, I expand on that just a little bit. Not only is uh, you know National uh, Fix a Leak Week, but for those of you people that are on septic. You know, every extra gallon of water, especially this time of year, as wet as it's been, um, you know, every extra gallon of water that goes down into your septic system, it's really taxing your your system. And a lot of times we get calls this time of the year where, you know, people are having trouble flushing. And uh, a lot of times we find it really 
sometimes there's really nothing wrong with the system other than it's hydraulically overloaded, which means there's just too much water in there. And so there's another real compelling reason to make sure that you're, you know, that you don't have leaks, whether it be your faucets or your uh, or your toilets. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, for those of, that aren't on septic, that pay those marvelous uh, sewer bill, you know, there's again, if the, you know, if it hits in your wallet, it's also a little painful. So, you know, for every gallon that comes in, we're paying for it. We're also paying for it as it goes out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you good know, a couple of good, you know, good compelling reasons. Definitely. And we gave you some nice tips on uh, little ways you can check for leaks, but obviously you can also look for visible leaks. That's a, a big right. deal. And um, yeah. the reason you want to do that, I don't know, Brendan, if you have a shower head that leaks 10 drops per minute, mm -hmm. it wastes 500 gallons of water per year, wow. which is equivalent to 60 loads on your dishwasher with your dishwasher. Okay, I mean, that's just putting it into perspective. You know, you just don't mm. think about it. Drip, drip, drip. It's even worse if it's it a hot water up. leak because you're heating it and then throwing it away. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's now, the big Brenna. One. Where do you get all these facts? I mean, you are just—you uh, don't sit there and count the drips and then do the math, do you? I do. Wow, you're <laughs> of amazing. Of course, I do. No, you know me. I'm always looking for ways to save energy and save the planet. That's, that's it. why I love my Simply Green Energy. I'm going to get you a green cape. Well, speaking of the planet, has anybody <laughs> been uh, watching what's going on in Japan and, yeah, and thought tragic. it through of the consequences in the energy market and what's happening? And we all know that they had this monster earthquake. And has anybody ever been in a big earthquake? No. 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 Oh, boy. Not, not, not I, I will tell you, if you get, I, I had the pleasure of being in a 7.0 in Los Angeles in 1991, and it's a devastating thing in your life. Uh, they had a 9. A 9 is 20 times stronger. Every tenth of the point on the Richter scale is a magnitude of 10. So a 7.1 is 10 times stronger than a 7. So when you go from 7 to 9, that's 20 of those decimals. So I, I can't even wrap my head around a, a 9.0. And you've but, been through one. Oh, uh, and I've been through wow. a, a major one. Um, now, they're having trouble with their nuclear reactors. Have you, have you seen this? Yeah, yeah. All right, they've got yeah. two reactors that are giving them trouble. Apparently the, um, and it's been all over the news, apparently the two reactors both turned off when they were supposed to shut down. But when the tidal wave came, it interrupted the backup systems for the cooling mechanism because you have to cool the reactors. Mm -hmm. So now they have these two reactors a few miles apart, and one of them is having a real pressure problem, and the other is having a heat problem. The one with the pressure problem, they've actually released radioactive vapors into the air to release the pressure in the system. The other one, they're having a very hard time. They think they're going towards a meltdown. Now, the government spokesmen are saying it's no big deal, but what happens in a full meltdown is the, the fuel gets so hot that it melts through the containers, which melts through the platforms, which melts into the earth, and as soon as nuclear material touches water, you've got a nuclear explosion. So there's a real fear right now of a nuclear explosion, even a minor one, which can poison land for thousands of miles around them and put all this toxic stuff in the air. I guess but, that's a good reason for us to talk about wind right. and solar well, voltaic. Let me I'll tell, tell you, you what else happened today. You're seeing our congressmen come out today, and they're already talking about it. These are guys that are very pro-nuclear. Now, I'm pro-nuclear myself. It's domestic. We own it. Okay? If you say it's safe, I'm going to believe you that it's safe. It just doesn't make sense to me putting it on an earthquake fault. Right. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But you're already seeing that the, the staunch advocates are starting to pump the brakes on building new reactor sites until we learn what's going on in Japan. Now, the minute you start interfering with the market like that, the cost of electricity is destined to go up. It is going up no matter how you cut it. They combine that with any energy. Combine any that energy. without look at the fuel. Right. Look what's going on with fuel? You look at the fuel. Combine that without you know drill, deep water drilling, without drilling in Anwar, and and and, and it's ripe for the pickings. Oh, yeah. Okay. So photovoltaics is a good discussion tonight because it's a way for the average homeowner to push back on the electric meter, and that's what really excites me yeah. about it. That's the big incentive. 
and photovoltaic that you could sell it back to the utility essentially. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk okay. about yeah. that yeah. later on yeah. the show. Right. I'm excited to learn more about Our that. Our guest is going to fill us full. P that seems to be one of the most popular questions I get is how do I sell this energy back to the utility? So I'd yeah. like to talk about that later today. You guys did a great job of setting us up for our guest, Mike Parks, Director of Renewable Energy at VP Supply Company. He's going to be joining us here on our second segment. We'll be back with more of Simply Green Radio brought to you by Simply Green Energy and Mr. Reuter here on News Radio 1180 WHAM.